Now that's terribly important. Really, the fundamental, ultimate mystery, the only thing you need to know to understand the deepest metaphysical secrets, is this. That for every outside, there is an inside, and for every inside, there is an outside. And although they are different, they go together. There is, in other words, a secret conspiracy between all insides and all outsides, and the conspiracy is this, to look as different as possible, and yet underneath to be identical, because you don't find one without the other. Like Tweedledum and Tweedledee agreed to have a battle. Note that, agreed. So there is a secret. What is esoteric, what is profound and what is deep, is what we will call the implicit. What is obvious and on the open is what we will call the explicit. And I and my environment, you and your environment, are explicitly as different as different could be. But implicitly, you go together. And this is discovered by the scientist when he tries, as the whole art of science is to describe what happens exactly. And when he describes exactly what you do, he finds out that you, your behavior, is not something that can be separated from the behavior of the world around you. He realizes that, that you are something that the whole world is doing. Just as when the sea has waves on it, all right, the sea, the ocean is waving. And so each one of us is a waving of the whole cosmos, the entire works, all there is. And with each one of us, it's waving and saying, you here I am. <laughs> Only it does it differently each time. Because variety is the spice of life. But you see, the funny thing is, we haven't been brought up to feel that way. Instead of feeling that we, each one of us, are something that the whole realm of being is doing, we feel that we are something that has come into the whole realm of being as a stranger. When we were born, we don't really know where we came from, because we don't remember. And we think when we die, that's just going to be that. Some people console themselves with the idea that they're going to heaven, or that they're going to be reincarnated, or they're going to summer land, or something, you know. People don't really believe that. But for most people it's plausible, the real thing that haunts them is that when they die, they're going to sleep and never going to wake up. They're going to be locked up in the safe deposit box of darkness forever. But that all depends, you see, upon a false notion of what is oneself. Now the reason why we have this false notion of ourselves is as far as I can understand it, that we have specialized in one particular kind of consciousness. Being very general, rough, we have two kinds of consciousness. One I will call the spotlight and the other the floodlight. The spotlight is what we call conscious attention. And that is trained into us from childhood as the most valuable form of consciousness. When the teacher in class says, pay attention, everybody stares and looks fast at the teacher like that. That's spotlight consciousness. Fixing your mind on one thing at a time. Concentrate. And even though you may not be able to have a very long attention span, nevertheless you concentrate. You use your spotlight one thing after another, one thing after another, flip, 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 like that. But we also have another kind of consciousness, which I'll call the floodlight. For example, you can drive your car for several miles with a friend sitting next to you, and your spotlight consciousness will be completely absorbed in talking to your friend. 
Nevertheless, your floodlight consciousness will manage the driving of the car, will notice all the stoplights, the other idiots on the road, and so on, and you'll get there safely, without even thinking about it. But our culture has taught us to specialize in spotlight consciousness and to identify ourselves with that form of consciousness alone. I am my spotlight.